So, I'm going to run through how to make this water scene inside 3ds Max using uh, the art renderer and the physical camera. So let's get started. Uh, so the first thing to do is to drag a plane into the scene for a water surface. So let's do that. So I'm just going to go over here into the create tab and create a plane. Uh, let's put it there and I'm going to make it 25 by 20 meters just for the sake of it. And then I'm going to rotate it into view. And just drag it back a bit. That'll do for the moment. And let's just stick it in that layer over there. There we go. Um, so I've already got a physical camera in my scene um, and I've got my old plane which I'm testing out there so let's now add uh, a light and I'm going to use um, 3ds Max's Sun Positioner uh, but first of all let's set up the art renderer cool there we go so Sun Positioner and click to where it's going to be rotate it in position and then drag it out of it and that will do So I'm just going to check um, exposure control, so the exposure control has been added for the physical camera and we have our sky environment map there. So let's just check everything renders, set the exposure value on the physical camera to 15 EV for daylight. I've got hidden, so there it is, 15 EV. And we'll just check the render setup and click render. Okay, so our daylight system is working. Now let's add um, some temporary materials. So let's create a new physical material. And I'm just going to put it on all my objects for the moment. There we go. Quickly render again. Cool, so that's all working. Uh, so let's look at deforming this water surface. So essentially to make water we're interested in making a bunch of noise at different frequencies. And so there's a helpful modifier already built for us. Uh, it's called the noise modifier. So uh, we can add some noise to the Z value, like that, and reduce the scale. And you can see that um, we need some more density in my plane, so I'm just going to do that with a turbo smooth modifier. Let's up the iterations a little bit, maybe one more. There you go. And Expand that out a bit and we'll turn that into a fractal. So, the, the other thing we can do is uh, sharpen up some of these wave peaks. And I can do that with a push modifier. And I'll give it some negative value. You see, this will push the whole wave plant down, but you'll see we'll also get these nice little crests now. Good, and just gonna start tweaking some values to make it a bit more sensible. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so we're getting some nice break up at the bottom of the water there. And let's just push the plane back a bit so that we're not seeing off into the rest of the world. There we 
we go. And maybe we just have a look at what happens if we add another filtration. Oops, too many. There we go. So the push modifier is a bit harsh. You can see these little black bits everywhere where the push modifier is clipping through itself. So I'm just going to reduce that to maybe 0.5. Try again. OK, I think that will do. Right. So um, we can animate uh, the, the noise. So um, if I just press play now, you'll see that nothing happens. But if I click on animate noise here, uh, we can see some movement. And um, just while we're testing out the movement, I'll just drop the turbo smooth iterations down. Now what you can see here is that the water motion starts and then stops. And we want it to be continuous. So we can do that by selecting the water plane and then down here on the bar here, we're going to click on the key and choose phase and then I'm going to change all these values to linear. So that one's already linear and that one linear as well. So now when I press play you can see that the movement is constant rather than starting and stopping. Cool, so let's just up the iterations again. And then the next thing to do is start looking at uh, our interesting this really crank it up. Uh, so the next thing to do is to look at the water material. Because this looks rather like snow at the moment. So Let's look at our physical material. So essentially the water is just a big wobbly mirror. So let's call this water. And I'm going to assign it to my plane. Uh, so we've got no base color really. So let's just dial it down to something very low like that. Okay that. And then I'm going to just add a tiny bit of roughness before that, that let's turn this into advanced so I'm just going to add a tiny bit of roughness to the reflections and I'm going to drop the IOR down to water which is 1.33 I believe let's have a look at that then and there we go So it's quite a rough day on this um, lake here, I guess. Um, so there's a few things we can tweak now. Um, what I'd like to do is be able to see through down into the water just a little bit. So what we're seeing here is reflections. You can see the posts are reflected slightly in the water. And what I want to just do is just see down into the, the water so it's not quite so black. And we can do that in a couple of different ways. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop the turbo smooth a little bit so it makes things faster. And then I'm going to turn off all that stuff. So uh, let's copy that. And then we start testing out various options. So uh, I'm going to turn on thin walled and assign it to that surface just replace the water for the moment and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the transparency to something like 0.8 I think and we'll just have a look at what that's doing so now you can see we can see that we are looking straight through the water and um, there's no distortions 
caused by the water itself because um, that's what thin wall do does thin wall is designed for um, basically glass so and if you mouse over it says that um, there will be no refraction or transparency depth okay so let's turn that off and we'll do that again so now you can see we get a similar result but our poles have shortened slightly and that's because of the refraction effect so let's just turn this off again and uh, if we turn our noise back on so here now it's difficult to see exactly what we're looking at so we can't tell if we're looking at um, transparency or if we're looking at reflections so let's just turn our reflections down to zero for the moment and then we can be sure what we're looking at so now you can see I've turned the reflections off and now we can definitely see that this is just the distortion effect caused by the water so I'm just going to dial this down now and um, we get something that feels about right. So the other thing I can do is I can mess with uh, this depth value. And let's just turn that on straight away. So let's take, make a depth of 2 meters. So these posts are um, 5 meters high. And let's see what happens if I do that. Okay, so you can see that nothing really happens. And that's because in order for this effect to work, I need to give the um, object some thickness. So right at the top here, uh, let's do that here actually. I'm going to add a turbo, no, 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 we're going to add a shovel like fire, that's it. So I'm going to just drop the bottom of the surface down five meters like that. And then we'll do this again. Now you can see we've got a very, a very different effect. So let's inspect what's happening. So I'm just going to mouse over the uh, depth control and it says um, basically that if it's non-zero, the transparency color is reached when, this kind of transparency color is reached when we hit the depth. So if I set the depth to one meter, which is about down there, and I'm going to set that to sort of some dark gray like that, um, then uh, we should hit that color at that depth. So let's see what that looks like. So now I've got some deep dark water, uh, f uh, which is going to be the base of our, our water sort of fogging effect. And then we can apply our reflections on top of that. So I'll start this once more, and we can turn our reflections back on again by simply dialing that up to one. And then I'm going to push that noise and that back on again. And let's have another render. Okay. So there's one last little thing we can do, and that's add some very tiny little surface wavelets to our water. So let's stop that. So I'm just going to copy this over here. And we can do that just with some more noise. So, but again, in order to inspect what's happening, I'm just going to turn our other noise off. So I'm going to add in the physical material, I'm going to add another noise map like this. And I turn it on to fractal. And we're going to set it to world XYZ. And let's just apply that now to our plane, place the existing material and re-render. Oops, and that's because I turned off the shell, so it's ruined all my fog. So let's just turn that back on again and re render. Ah, there you go, that's better. Okay, so that's just the effect of the noise map. Uh, so I want that to be a much, much finer effect. So let's turn the scale down to 
five. Let's have a look at turbulence and see what that looks like. So you can see we've got this very fine noise effect now. Uh, and this is kind of reminiscent of uh, just the tiny little wavelets you get on top of windy water. So I just need to dial it back a bit. So it's not so pronounced. And I can do that by going into the bum mat here. And I'm going to just set this to something like 0 0.05, I think we'll do. And we'll render again. Yeah, and that's a lot better, I think. So it's repeating a bit up here. We're seeing a bit of interference patterning. Um, but when we turn on the rest of our effect, that will all go away. So let's stop that. And we're going to turn on noise and push again and re render. Cool. So what I'll do, I think, is I'll just stop the video here. I'm going to apply some materials to the um, pier. Uh, and I'm just going to make sure that I've got these guys. I'm just going to make a big a box map. There we go. Wait, ugh. Box map. And let's just set it to something even like 3 times 3 times 3. And then we'll render that. So uh, I wanted something a bit prettier, so I went and grabbed a texture from CG Textures. Uh, so we've got a nicer wood texture here and tweaked a few of the values. So what I found is that uh, we had a very small Z value for our noise of 0.06, scale of 20.5, and then quite a big push value of 0.25. And that gave me this um, sort of sharp wavelet look. And we've got sort of some high wind on this lake. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to find a way to share this scene file with you guys. So um, hopefully that will come out soon.